Good morning, good evening, good night. Whenever you guys are watching this channel, first subscribe and just ignore all this junk here in the background. I'm here in my garage. I'm just a country boy living in the city. But if you've been following my channel, you know that I'm big on natural immunity for the COVID-19. And you guys should know my story. You know that in February of 2021, my wife and I tested positive for COVID. And like I said, I didn't believe the first test, so I took two more after that within the same week, and all three tests were positive. But we did quarantine for our 14 days, and we tested again, and we both tested negative. But we go to the doctor every month and a half or every two months and get our antibodies and we have natural antibodies especially my wife hers is like 10 times higher than mine because she had a lot more side effects but i've been following this uh professor at uh i think it's george mason university his name is todd uh Zawiski. i think that's how you say his name but the university wanted him or wanted everybody to be vaccinated and if they weren't vaccinated, they can face disciplinary actions, including getting terminated. But anyway, this law professor, he took it to court and um, he actually won because he had uh, COVID there in March of 2020. So that's almost two years, a year and a half, and he still have high antibodies. And all these studies have proven and science have proven that natural antibodies is as good or even better than the vaccines two doses of the vaccine so he fought against it and i'm gonna let you listen to some of his story and you tell me what you think and leave comments and joining us now is todd zawicki george mason university foundation professor of law uh, todd thank you for coming on faith nation tonight i see you made news when you fought george mason's vaccine mandate and you ended up winning you, you stated that you're not uh, in the anti-vax camp. Tell us why you feel the mandate was wrong and why you didn't need the shot. And I'm not anti-vax either. You know, like my daughter, she worked at the school and I don't know if she got any natural immunities and, you know, whatever her decision is, I'm going to support it 100 percent. I'm always on my kid's side. Whatever they decide in life, I'm with them. You know, she could take the vaccination or she can try to go without it, but I don't know that's up to her because a lot of these kids are coming down with COVID. I'm for her, whatever she decide, vaccinated or unvaccinated, I'm 100% for her. So we'll go ahead and continue. Well, my case relies specifically on me, which is um, I got COVID back in March 2020. Um, it was no fun. Uh, nobody needs to tell me not to get COVID again. And so I'm very conscious right. of this. And if there had been a vaccine back then, based on what I knew, I would have probably gotten it. It would have been a lot better off than uh, uh, getting COVID. But the reality is now I do have COVID. And it's very clear that once you have COVID and you've recovered, you've got uh, natural mu immunity. And the evidence is clear now. It used to be that it was at least as good as vaccine immunity. It quite clearly now is better than vaccine immunity, as we saw in this study that came out from Israel uh, this week that showed that those who have been vaccinated have a 13 times higher risk of, uh, of infection, 27 times higher risk of symptomatic infection, eight times higher risk of death than somebody with natural immunity like me. And so I was very careful. I got my antibodies tested. My immunologist said my antibodies level was comparable to somebody who had just been vaccinated. Um, and so I don't need uh, the vaccine in order to be, protect myself or those around me. And the final thing I'll say is, is the evidence is also very clear that those who have had COVID and recovered are at not just the same risk of side effects as, uh, as anybody from any vaccine, but we actually have an elevated risk of side effects. So it really is all of, uh, you know, none of the benefits and all of the risks plus more of somebody who might actually benefit from the vaccine. And so based on that, I argue that I should get, uh, based on my natural immunity, my demonstrable natural immunity, I should be exempted from the university's um, uh, vaccine mandate. And that is the same thing like my wife. She's got a high antibody level and her job is trying to get them to get vaccinated. But she's uh, hesitant on it because she think that she may have more side effects since she already have high antibodies and well protected. And we've been everywhere. And uh, we since sorry, we've had COVID. We even, um, to be honest with you, we feel better. We're going to the gym. We're doing other things. And 
we're not having no other problems. I know we've probably been around other people that may have had COVID, but I think because we got antibodies that's protecting us that we're okay for right now. But we'll continue. Uh, along those lines, uh, dissenters say the jury's still out. Uh, you just you just mentioned that Israeli study, a number of studies are touting natural immunity. Uh, what do you believe that means for calls supporting vaccine passports and vaccine credentials? It's completely ridiculous. Um, there are there have now been 15 studies of uh, to compare natural immunity uh, with vaccines, and every and all 15 have shown that that uh, in the range of 90 to 95 percent protection, which is what the uh, mRNA uh, vaccines are at their peak. And now, as we know, they wane very quickly. Another mm -hmm. study from Israel found that vaccine protection wanes 40% a month. Natural immunity wanes 5% um, a month. Um, and then, um, uh, and, so, and so, and we know that it's much better than the more mediocre vaccines like Johnson & Johnson, which even in the clinical trials was only about 66% uh, protection. There is literally no doubt about this anymore. It's also mm. very clear that natural immunity, um, as we saw in the Israeli study, is very resistant to, um, to, uh, uh, to variants, such as the Delta variant, because it recognizes the entire protein, whereas the vaccine is only used to target this narrow spike protein. And now we're actually vaccinating people against a spike protein that is now extinct, and not only now extinct, it's been extinct for several generations of uh, variants. And so uh, natural immunity has proven itself on, on this. Um, uh, and as we see more and more breakthrough infections throughout the country, there are more breakthrough infections um, in a month um, uh, uh, there are 35,000 breakthrough infections a week is what mm. the CDC uh, um, estimated. There have been more breakthrough infections right. just this spring than natural immunity breakthroughs in the entire world. Mm. All right, Todd Zawicki, George Mason University Foundation Professor of Law. Thank you so much for coming on this evening. All the best. Thank you, John and Jenna. Great to talk with you.